Hi, I'm David Smith and I'm going to show you some of the inbuilt scripting features in Sony Vegas Pro, but I'm also going to show you a quick tour of a fantastic program called Scattershot 3D from John Refrano at Vast. Uh, this is a, a tremendously powerful program uh, that exploits the scripting power of Vegas, but also the three-dimensional uh, workspace that you have access to in 3D track motion control. So let's have a look first of all at the scripts that are already inbuilt, which are found under Tools Scripting. And there's a whole range of scripts, everything from adding time code to all media, batch rendering, exporting chapters, um, stereo to mono, remove letterboxing, a whole range of options. And these all at the single click produce uh, really powerful um, assistance for you uh, with all those sort of time consuming, tedious tasks that. Um, scripting makes uh, automated very very simply. There are also some lovely engines produced by for example Vegasaur uh, by Edward Troxell which produces fabulous arrays of one-click options everything from oh, track motion, deleting all track motion, deleting all effects, um, freeze framing, matching output aspects, closing gaps on selected tracks or events uh, just a whole range of um, possibilities and these all rely on the Vegas scripting engine which is inbuilt. Now there's also um, Ultimate S4 from Vast with John Refrano and Douglas Spotted Eagle as the, uh, the authors and this again provides a huge array of um, possibilities. DVD production, special effects, film looks, a whole range of simple editing tools, uh, batch processing and so on. So the scripting within Vegas is extremely powerful. I want to show off a piece of software called Scattershot 3D from Vast and this allows you to do really complex manipulations using the inbuilt 3D engine within Vegas at a single click. I'm going to bring in some pictures that I've prepared as square images because I want to make a video cube and show you how simple it is to use Scattershot 3D to make a video cube. So I'm bringing all of these six images in and I'll place them at zero on the timeline. Um, I'm going to change the project properties to match these squares. So I go to properties and then I'll use this match media video settings button and I'll go to my files, OzCam magazine and then here we go scattershot, where is it? scattershot review and I'll just choose one of these pictures which is square and that then sets my project properties to 1736 by 1736 at 25 frames per second. So my project is now a square project as you can see here. Now I want to alter the duration of this. I'll make it up to 30 seconds or thereabouts. So I'll go up to my toolbar where I've put a button for Scattershot 3D and that will come down here like this. Um, and I'm going to select all of the tracks and in one click I can make the um, events change length to match the first one. So first of all we've got four tabs here, 3D Scatter, Circle Scatter, Cube Creator and Matrix Scatter and I'll show you examples of some of those in a minute. So I'm going to go to my Cube Creator using the custom size of 1736 by 1736 by 1736. I'm going to add a parent composite track which will be the controlling track and so now I'm going to process this and what you see is that in one click we've got a cube that rotates really nicely and now I want to show you the next level of complexity I can close this down what I might do is add a background to this I've got a nice background of clouds here. So I'll just add one more video track and put that right down the bottom here. 
Notice that the six tracks that I've got here are now child tracks within this single parent track, which is the parent controller labelled by Scattershot as parent controller. I'll just make those a whisker smaller so we can see the screen a bit bigger. And I'll just drop in this cloud image as a, a background for the whole thing just to make it look a little prettier. And I'll just be a little bit smart and I will make this match the project output aspect. And I will slide it along to the left to start with. And at the end, I'll slide it across to the right. So it just moves slightly across the screen as things happen. So now we can see how the background, the clouds are there behind it. But now here's where the fun starts. Because I go into the, the mode of this parent controller track and I go now to 3D Source Alpha. And now if I go across to the parent motion track, you can see I've now got access to the 3D screen. And so this lets me control the x-axis, the top view, the left view, the front view, and the perspective view of my cube. It's actually of my whole track. So what happens is if you watch on the screen, I'll just make this a wee bit smaller and move it down here a bit. And you can see that as I move this, I'm able to move, rotate, tilt, tilt forwards, and change the actual size of the whole thing. So let me see, we'll go along, we'll start off at the beginning with a nearly full size screen, and then we'll rotate. Oh, it's disappearing off into the distance. Um, and I'm going to adjust it so that it comes back at the end onto the, where are they? The koalas. There we go. Um, now I'll move this a bit bigger and we'll do a wee bit of tweaking straighten it up a little bit and with a bit of luck this is pretty rough and ready but we get the idea we'll wind up on the koalas at the end like so and I'll just have to take out that last keyframe because it's doing the wrong thing I'll just delete that one but what you can see is that in a very few clicks we've managed to make a 3D cube with stills on each face and it is totally controllable by the parent controller track. A really smart piece of software. Now we'll try something a little different. I've gone back to my six basic tracks. And now I'm going to go from Cube Creator. I'm going to try going to 3D Scatter. Uh, we're going to visit each track for three seconds. And the travel time to get to each track will be one second. Selected tracks. Uh, better select all my tracks. Here we go, and we'll process this one. And so now what we've got is a very different appearance. We've got now, if we watch this play through, this is playing through in just low resolution, but we can see that each track comes up, holds, disappears. The next track comes up. So here's a great way of showcasing a range of um, stills or videos. Of course, each of these tracks could contain video, in which case they would play in real time as well. And what you can see on the control track here is just a series of keyframes have been uh, entered. And we've also introduced some uh, opacity envelopes, which you can see the purple ones down here um, are changing over time. And we're just going from the first one, the first track through to the second track, which then fades out and so on and so on until we're left just with the final track at the end. So with, again, really one click, you get this incredibly powerful effect. I'll just go back. You can undo, of course, each of these things with the control Z anytime you like, 
Now we'll go to Circle Scatter and we'll select our tracks here. We're all selected, so we'll process this lot. And now what happens is we've got a circle, which is hard to see at this size, so we'll just go back to our parent controller, which is still in 3D mode, and we'll just shrink this down a wee bit. And you can see that we've now got, um, instead of our cube, we've actually got a circle of, of tracks. It's a bit hard to see. Let's just go back in there and I'll tip it over a bit. And you can see that it's actually a, a circle of um, tracks now that moves in space. Now, of course, the possibilities here are just endless. You could make up um, a space station by using the appropriate graphics or videos and make it move quietly in space. Um, all sorts of possibilities. Let's just close that off again and we'll go back and look at um, the matrix scatter version. I'll just undo Control Z to undo all that work. And now we'll go into matrix scatter uh, and this will process rather nicely into what is effectively a video wall. Now, of course, instead of having the six tracks, let's just get rid of this and make it a bit bigger so you can see what's actually happened here. Instead of um, stills, you could have video tracks and have a really interesting video wall. And you can dial up the number of columns and rows that you want and so on. And you can alter the perspective so that they don't stretch they, as they have in this case. But it's still really simple and really powerful to make a video wall um, in literally one click. So Scattershot 3D is a really powerful plugin that takes literally hours of work out of uh, manipulating the 3D engine within Vegas Pro. And it's all done with the scripting developed by John Refrano at Vast. And it's a really fantastic um, addition to your suite of tools in Vegas Pro.